this dry and desert land I tell myself keep walking on Here's something up ahead Water falling like a My soul, a well that never will run dry. I've rambled on my own, never believing I would find an everlasting stream. Your river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow. Yeah. 
Amen, amen. Please be seated. It's so great to see everyone here. I want to first, I want to ask y'all, have you noticed anything different about the screens? That one's working, but this one's working. But if y'all look above you, we have the new monitors installed. We did that last week. I can't believe y'all didn't see it. So the old ones in the back that were put in in 1910 are gone. They're in the closet over there. So we've got the new ones installed, all wired up and ready to go. And uh, we're painting tomorrow. Miss Lena is going to paint tomorrow. Do you want some help? Is she? Is, uh, I'm going to try to help her. If you got, uh, if you like to paint, come in. Probably going to start whenever. What time you going to start? Oh well. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to start quite at 5, but we'll be there close. Somewhere about 9 o'clock. How's that? 10 o'clock. If you got some time tomorrow and you want to help roll some paint on the walls, because the screens are going to go up, and we're going to put the screens on the walls. We're going to see how that works. So once we put the screens up, though, we're going to have to figure something out because you can't lower the screens. Anyway, it's that time for small talk. I want to bring everyone down. Uh, come on down for small talk. Oh, I lost two. Got a couple here. I got one there. Y'all come on over here. Oh, all right. Today is Sunday. What comes, uh, what's happening Thursday? Halloween. It's Halloween. Batman's going to be here, right? Batman's going to be here and, huh? Spider-Man, Batman, Spider-Man, Power Ranger, Superman, Huh? The in Incredible Hulk? Who? Got it? I'm, I can't hear. Oh, an inflatable shark. An inflate. Ooh. Have you ever seen, um, huh? Incredible shark? That's what I said, inflatable. Say, <laughs> so he can't hear either. Anyway, today is a special day because. This afternoon, starting at 5 o'clock, we're going to have Trunk or Treat. We're going to have a fall festival. And so everybody can wear their costume. You get to go in a bounce house. You even get to throw balls at Pastor John because there's a pastor dunking booth. I challenge anyone in here because no one in here can. They all throw like girls. You all throw like girls. There's no way you can. You throw like our girl too. So I challenge y'all to try to dunk me. And when you get tired of dunking me, Bruce is going to be in there. So for the adults that want to dunk Bruce, so come on by. Anyway, starts at 5 o'clock. And at 4.30, y'all have pets? Y'all have a pet? What do you have? Dog? What do you got? A dog? We're having blessing of the pets at 4.30 in the courtyard. You can bring any pet you want except the snake. No snakes. You can bring an alligator, you can bring a lizard, you can bring a butterfly, whatever, but no snakes. So come and join us for that too. Huh? I don't know. Can you? If you can, bring it. So what I want to talk to you about today is Jesus. We always talk about Jesus, huh? But he met this guy. This guy, was he was blind, and he was sitting on the side of the road, and he was begging for food. And he started hollering for Jesus, son of David, have mercy, son of David, son of David. And people were t kind of telling him, like, you just need to be quiet. He doesn't have time for you because we're on our way to something very important. And he just kept hollering. But see, that didn't dismiss that guy. He didn't. He said, you know what? That doesn't matter because I'm going to go ahead and holler even louder. And he hollered louder, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops and he says, bring him over here. So Jesus didn't call him, but he told his disciples to go get him and bring him to him. And when they heard that, they went to the man and they said, Jesus is calling you. So hurry up and get over here. So he jumps up. Now he's blind. He jumps up and he leaves everything that he owned laying right there on the side of the road. And he goes over to Jesus and Jesus asks him a very simple question. What do you want of me? In other words, what do you want me to do to make things right in your life? And he was so humble, and he knew who Jesus was. He didn't ask for anything other than, I just want to see again. That's all he asked for. And Jesus said that your faith has made you, uh, your faith has restored your sight, and he could see again. 
And then he told Jesus to, or then Jesus told him to go. Just to go. And he followed Jesus all the way to Jerusalem, all the way to the cross, the day that he was crucified and died. In his name, he's only one, well, he's practically the only one in the gospel that Jesus calls by name. All the other folks that he healed, the, the ten lepers, the, the other blind guy, the guy that was crippled on the side of the, uh, of the road, the guy they lowered down through the ceiling, he never called them by name, but this one he called by name. And his name was Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus watched Jesus go into Jerusalem and, take, and, and be welcomed as a king because he knew who Jesus was and watched him be crucified. And shared, and he went after that and shared everything that he knew about Jesus. That's pretty cool stuff, huh? We should share what we know about Jesus too. In fact, those folks that they don't have much. Y'all know anybody at school that doesn't have much? Yeah, I, I, when I was teaching, I had several students that didn't have much. And what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take care of them as Jesus and Bartimaeus took care of others. Because that's who we are as disciples. We're not supposed to shun them and push them off to the side and says, you're not important. Because they are. They're just as important as you. Just as important as all of these folks out here. And just as important as I am. Because they're children of God. They're children of God. And they're heirs to his kingdom. Just like everyone else here. So, what did we learn from Bartimaeus? That. He was left off into the dark. He was sitting on the side of the road begging. But Jesus had a special plans for him and told him to go. He restored his sight because he, he could see now. He knew who Jesus was. He could see. And he restored his sight and he went and told everybody about Jesus. He followed Jesus all the way. And that's what we do, right? And so where are we going to go at 5 o'clock today? Trunk fe or fall festival, trunk retreat, right? You want to be Batman? You going to come throw balls at me? Try to dunk me? All right, we'll see. We'll see. If anybody can do it, I think you can. And then I want you to throw balls at Bruce. Bruce needs to be dunked too. That's him right there. All right, so let's, let's, let's give thanks to God. So dear God, thank you for opening my eyes so I can see again. Amen. All right, y'all ready to sing? Chance again. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. All right, high fives, high fives, high fives. Okay, oh, a finger five. So that is something we have going on today. This has been a very, very, very busy month, and uh, we're wrapping it up today with Trunk or Treat. Halloween is Thursday, so don't be... One of those folks, do you know 30% um, of all people will sit at home pretending that they're not there so they don't have to answer the door to pass out candy? Don't be that person. It's not a demonic holiday. It is a lot of fun for the kids. It's a lot of fun for us, you know, to dress up to, to go around with the kids. I'm going to take my kids in the golf cart, and we're going to run all over the neighborhood because uh, I have these really bright LED lights on there. I win the light contest every year. And so we're just going to go have a lot of fun. So do that as, as well. Our scripture today comes from the book of Mark. You know, we've been kind of muddling our way through the book, book of Mark. It comes out of chapter 10. It's the very last verse of chapter 10. It starts at verse 46 and it ends in 52. I'm going to read it to you today or right now. In, in, uh, so let us open our minds and our hearts so that we may... Perceive the words that uh, God has for us. They came, on to Jer uh, they came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, 
was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Well, Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprung up and he came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. These are the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we ask that you open our hearts, fill it with your words today. Give us the words to pour out of our mouth. Let your spirit dwell within us as we bring your insight, your words to your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The first thing I want to point out is Bartimaeus recognized who Jesus was. He knew Jesus as the Messiah. Scripture tells us that. He called out, Son of David, Son of David. And I lost my train of thought. Two sentences in in my train of thought. So he calls out, Son of David, and it's showing right here, it shows that that. Bartimaeus knew exactly who Jesus was because he just labeled him. He just labeled him with a Davidic code, saying that you're the son of David, or, and, and so your, your heritage is now seen. He saw who Jesus was at that point. And the next chapter that we're going to go into, chapter 11, if you look at it, it's all about Jesus going into Jerusalem to be handed over to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Before that, you know, Jesus, this whole section, for, uh, chapters 1 through 10, is everything about Jesus' ministry. You know, we talked a, a, a whole lot about him healing other people. We talked about the disciples, how he gathered the disciples, and how he asked them to follow him. But now we're ending his ministry in Jericho, and we're moving on to Jerusalem. So Jesus interrupts his journey in order just to speak to this poor beggar whom others have called unworthy, who others have kind of sternly told him, do you just be quiet because Jesus doesn't have time. He's on a mission. He's going into Jerusalem and he's going to to present himself and overthrow the uh, the, the Romans and he's going to uh, right the kingdom of God. But Bartimaeus, or Bartimaeus, He gets louder, and he tells them, no, son of David, have mercy on me. He sees who Jesus is. Unlike the other disciples, you know, how many times have we talked about the other disciples where Jesus predicted his own death three times? He was trying to prepare them. He's saying, I will be handed over to the men Uh, the Romans, the Pharisees, and I will be tortured, I will be beat, and then I will be crucified. And they just kind of shunned it off. They just kind of pushed it off to the backside and didn't worry about it. Those disciples there, they wished for their own greatness and their own glory. Remember we talked about John and James wanting positions of greatness at Jesus' right side and Jesus' left side. That's all they could see. They said, yeah, 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 you know, just uh, in... in, um, Verse 31, it was like, yeah, 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 we know, we know, you've already told us that you're going to die, you're going to be crucified, but we want our position secured. We want to be able to be right here next to you. And he says, this is not my place to give those away, for that is for the, the right of the Father and the kingdom to give those places away. And they said, but in order to follow me, you need to do what? You need to take the cup of suffering that I'm taking. And you need to be able to uh, take the baptism that I'm going to get. This is talking about the cup of blessings, right? The blood of the new covenant. And it's talking about his death. The death and buried and rose again on the third day. And John and James and and all the other disciples, they all said, yes, yes, we're actually going to do that. We we know this is what our destiny is. This is who we we are because we're disciples, we're followers. But in reality, all they had was their own selfishness. Unlike Bartimaeus, 
You see, Bartimaeus, he only wanted his sight restored. And so when Jesus calls him or when Jesus sends his disciples or the crowd to him, they bring him before him and he says, what is it that you want me to do? Simple question. Where else did we hear that question? John and James. When he said, Lord or master or teacher or rabbi, we want you to do something for us. And Jesus tells him, what? What is it that you want me to do? The same language. He used for those disciples of the twelve that he uses for Bartimaeus as well. But in Bartimaeus' cases, he said, what is it that I can do to make it right? For scripture tells us that Bartimaeus says, all I want is to be able to see again. How many of y'all picked up on that? A blind beggar sitting beside the road, total darkness. But he says, all I want to do is to be able to see again. So does that tell us that at one time he could see? Possibly. Possibly. So why was his sight taken away from him? Now I want to be very clear. This is not a healing story. This is not a, a story about how sin causes physical ailments. For example, Throughout this whole time, if you were blind or if you were lame or you were crippled or you, you were starving, it was because you did something in your past or your family's done something in their past and that sin was passed on to you to cause you this blindness. That's not it. That's not it at all. This story is a story of a call. A story of calling. Jesus sends his disciples to him. He wants to talk to you. Come on, get up. What do you, you're, you're sitting there, and what does he do? He drops everything. He leaves everything lying right there on the corner. He left his cloak when, it, when, when he said he threw his cloak off. Now, for a blind man to throw his cloak off and to leave it there, that's all he owned. And he left it. He left it. So what kind of faith does that take? To leave everything that you have there. Look, if he doesn't restore my sight, I need my cloak because the cloak is what distinguishes me as being blind so I can have my hand out or so that somebody can take care of me. But he left it. Where else did we hear Jesus say, leave everything. Get rid of all your possessions. Give them, give them away. Sell everything and give the money to the poor. Where else did you hear that? The rich young ruler. But what could he not do? He could not do that. He couldn't sell what he had. And so he left with his head down. Another call story, but, but he rebuked it. He said, no, I can't do that, so I have to go. But Bartimaeus, he throws it behind him, and he goes to Jesus, and he says, what do you want me to do? All I want is to be able to see again. That's it. And Jesus tells him that his faith has recovered his sight. Jesus commends him for his faith. Bartimaeus' spiritual sight is now restored, which results in the physical sight being restored. He then, he then is told to go, but does he go? No, he stops and he follows Jesus. Remember, how did he call the twelve? Come, follow me. John, James, Andrew, Matthew, come, follow me. We will make fishermen of the world. Or we will make fishers, fisher people of the world. He called them to follow him. But yet, Bartimaeus, he says to go. Take what I have done. Take your sight and go. Share it with everyone out there. And so he follows him. Jesus, in this call right here, is a calling of hope. It's a calling of spiritual healing. It's a calling of spiritual greatness to go. Go with me. And he did. He followed him all the way to the cross. All the way to the cross. His was not a, a calling of suffering like the disciples will have. His was a calling of hope. Who stayed with him? What happened to the other 12 disciples when they got to Jerusalem? What happened on the day that he was carrying his cross to the top of the mountain? They abandoned him. P 
Peter rebuked him three times. But Bartimaeus did not. And I want to point something out. And I don't, I don't have the answer to this, but was, was this the same Bartimaeus that traveled with Paul later? Paul was blinded too, remember? Uh, and, and I'm just curious. So if anybody knows, please uh, let me know after the end of uh, in the service today because I think it's just kind of, kind of interesting. So Jesus is telling him to go away to the cross, away to follow him. Again, this concludes the third passion prediction. The first section is the gospel is written as a whole. Mark is telling us all about the passion of Christ, the three predictions, and telling us about his ministry. And right now we're going into Jerusalem. We're going into the final deal. When uh, Bartimaeus calls out son of David, like I said, he is giving us a Davidic theme uh, for Jesus that, go, that is going into Jerusalem. He is laying down his heritage. God's king. God's king will again reign in Jerusalem. That is what Bartimaeus is saying. That son of David, I know who you are. You are the true Messiah. He's laying it down. He's saying he is coming into Jerusalem to rule once again. And so... To wrap this up and tie it up, Bartimaeus is exemplifying what the perfect disciple is. He's exemplifying who a disciple should be. He's exemplifying a disciple who has faith. Faith and not fear. Peter was afraid. The other disciples were afraid. After the crucifixion, they hid in the upper room because they were afraid for their life. They were afraid that the same thing was going to happen to them. Son of David, have mercy on me. How many times have we sat in the darkness? How many times have we sat and begged God for something to happen to, to us, something good to happen to us? How many times have we sat there and cried our eyes out because we just didn't know where to turn anymore? We couldn't figure out who we were or where we were supposed to be or, or what child we were. And we waited and we waited for God. Most of y'all know my story. I, I really don't have to tell y'all this again. I'm divorced. I uh, was married for 15 years. have three children from that marriage. Love my children. But after that divorce, I was lost. I didn't know which way to turn. Yes, I had a job. I was uh, still teaching school, and I poured all my energy into that. But at night, I sat there, and I was alone. I sat there in a house that was empty, had one chair, by myself. And I would cry out. God, there has to be something more. Why am I going through this? What, what did I do to deserve this? Why can't I see any more? Why can't I see where my future is going? It was about six months later that I met my wife, Cassandra. It has been the most blessed 15 years of marriage that I am, well, 14 years. We dated for five before that, before we got married. And it has been the ble most blessed time because my eyes were once again open. Open to that God does not create bad things. God does not or is not the author of evil. God doesn't make all these bad things happen. But what God does is in our time of need, in our time of need, he takes and he turns those things into something good into something good. If you've never been alone, if you've never sat in a dark house by yourself, not knowing if you wanted to get up in the morning, trust me, he takes and he turns it around and he makes something good. As in Bartimaeus' case, he sat in darkness, he begged, 
All he wanted was to be able to see again. We have people like that here today. We have people that we see on the street corners. All they want is something to help them to see again. Is that a handout or a hand up? That's between you and the Holy Spirit. All they want is someone to recognize them. As a society, we push all of those that, that we look at that are different from us, that are different from us as not worthy not worthy for us to talk to. We don't want to be bothered by them. They may, they, they may be just different, but they're not worthy. And so we push them off to the fringes, to the margin of society. Where is that true discipleship of faith, of hope, of love that we see in Bartimaeus? You know, Jesus' ministry no longer is a ministry of suffering. It's no longer a ministry of death. It's no longer a ministry of having to be put to death, to rise again, of a baptism of, 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 of death and resurrection, because that's already happened. It is a ministry now of love. It is a ministry now of hope. It is a ministry now of regaining the sight that Jesus can give you so you can open your eyes to see the hurting people outside that needs to be helped. Just as those people called to Bartimaeus to say, come, he's calling you. Drop everything you have. Shed your cloak. Run to him with open arms. And when he says, what do I need to do to make it right? Just restore my sight, Lord. Restore my sight. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Well, Heavenly Father, as we conclude today, let us search our souls. Let us search our heart so that we can see again. Let us be, Bartimaeus, as, as we shed our cloak to run to you. Let us be the blind beggar that can receive or that has his sight restored so that we can go and share the message that you put inside of us. Share the hope, share the love for the world to see, for our neighbors to see. Let us stand up and fight for the injustice for those who are pushed off to the sides in the margin. Let us fight for those who just want to simply be heard. Let us come together as one in Christ, one with each other so that we can glorify the kingdom of heaven that is right before us today. In Jesus we pray. Amen. The ushers. Well, most gracious God, we ask that you accept our gifts as fragrant offerings so that we can continue to grow the kingdom that you have given to us so that love and hope can be shared. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Jesus knew where he was going that day in Jericho. He knew the next stop was Jerusalem. Torture, humiliation, being spit upon. 
but he did it anyway. He did it for you. As he was taking the cross to the hill and they were whipping him and he was bleeding and they drove the spikes through his hands and raised him up and the whole body weight fell upon his chest and his lungs and he cried out cried out for you for that night before he submitted himself he took a loaf of bread and he raised it to the heavens and he gave thanks to you Father God and he broke that bread and he said this is my body given to you freely given to you freely take eat and do this in remembrance of me But he took a cup afterwards and he raised it to the heavens and he gave thanks and he said, this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take, drink, and as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It was at that point, his death upon the cross when the Holy Spirit Descend it to take him. And we pray that the Holy Spirit take this mystery and change these elements of bread and vine to be the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. To be one in ministry to, towards the world. In ministry to the world. As Bartimaeus became one to do ministry with the people in his world. Will those helping with communion please come forward? The table is set, friends. Please join me in Holy Communion. Let the band come up. It's the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. Because the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. And the body of Christ given for you. And the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. You're welcome. The body of Christ given for you. And the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Yeah. And the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given to you. And the body of Christ given to you. The body of Christ given to you. The body of Christ given to you. Father, the body of Christ given to you. Love. 
And so you're uh, um, welcome to come up, light a candle before service, and uh, um, you know bring that spirit in. All Saints Day is very, very important. When we have Holy Communion right here, we not just commune with each other and the Holy Spirit and God, but all the saints in heaven. And see, we don't go through this great big thing about making a saint. What do they call that? Canonizing or uh, chronicles, I think. We don't do that. Anybody that we love that's in heaven is a saint. And so we get to share that day with them. That's so cool, right? It's so special that we get to light a candle in their honor and commune again with them. And that's just not on that Sunday, but it's on all Sunday. So next Sunday is All Saints Day. Uh, if you got any suggestions, get with uh, Pastor Harold or Stacy in the front. Bridge, sewing, painting tomorrow at 9-ish. Yes, ma'am? Still have a few pumpkin patch slots that we need people to help with. So, if, um, uh, what, what are these? Send me a list. Send me a list because I'll see if I can't fill one of the slots. Okay. Okay. So, if you want to work with me, get in touch with me. We'll fill a slot. Okay. Uh, since I'm here till time anyway, I'll, I don't mind helping. Um, Anything else? Did I miss anything? No Luke? snakes. Huh? No snakes. No snakes. <laughs> no snakes. Alligators are cool. Lizards are cool. Birds are cool. Snakes are not cool. And I'll tell you the reason that, that snakes aren't cool is when I was a kid, we raised peanuts, and as we thrashed them, and uh, you're in the bobtail truck shoving peanuts to the front because they drive over and they're... They, they pick up snakes in the field, rattlesnakes in the field. 99% of the time they're dead, but that 1% of the time they're not. And when it falls on you and it's rattling, you can't get out of that truck fast enough. Because you're in the penis like this. And so, yeah, I, I don't like snakes. Alright, I don't think there's any more announcements. So let us stand as we sing our final song, a couple verses. Brothers and sisters, do not be... Do not be a John, James, Andrew, or Matthew, Philip, or Peter. Don't deny Christ, but be a Bartimaeus, or a Go forth. Go to the cross. Take the cross with you. Take it outside these, world, these walls. Invite someone inside the walls. Invite someone just to share the love that God has offered. Go from this place in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and know that you are blessed and love. Amen. He's coming on the clouds, keys and keys will bow down. And every chain will break, and his broken hearts declare his praise. Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's warring with power and fighting the battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb will slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks his chains. Every knee will bow before him. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty?